Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> uh, this is the day that the Lord hath made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Even seeing that white stuff coming out of the sky. Uh, our announcements today are uh, thank you for joining us, everyone. And uh, we're very appreciative of all of you, our regular attenders, and then also for the visitors online. And um, we encourage you to pull up the Wichita Facebook and um, on your smartphone now and share our line service on your own Facebook page so we can connect with anyone who would like to hear our service today. Our upcoming events, we've got a lot of them. The Wichita Christmas Party, December the 10th, is join us for fun and a focus on Jesus as we play bingo, enjoy food and fellowship, and win some pretty cool gifts. And I saw a table out there with lots of gifts on them. Just think of who you could invite that does not have a church family or attend a church and bring a snack and a treat and a beverage to share. And I think, is there a sign up in the uh, foyer? I don't know. You'll have to check that out. And um, December the 24th is our Christmas Eve service. And a change in time is 5 o'clock. And that's nice and early. So you can go home and see what is under the tree. <laughs> uh, December the 25th is also uh, Sunday at 10 a.m. That's a change of time, a half an hour earlier. Um, and that will be a short service here at the church. And the ministry highlights for this week are our worship team. We want to remember them. Each week, this dedicated team of musicians and singers lead us into corporate worship as we direct our hearts and mind to the King of Kings. Thank you, worship team. 
In preparation for the Christmas meal baskets, we are asking that all names of those needing food help and donations be submitted by December the 22nd. The sign-up sheet for those able to shop or deliver a food box will be in the communication hall. If you have questions, please contact Jean Pentecost. And also, please have all donation for our shut-in Christmas gift packages in by December the 18th. Please do not include sweet edibles. We anticipate doing six packages. If you have any questions, please contact Judy Parker. And her name and phone number is in the directory. Thank you. Okay. Good morning, everybody. Morning. It's the second Sunday of Advent. We have our lovely candle lighter over there. Okay. So Advent means arrival. We celebrate the arrival of Christmas, which is the celebration of the birth of Jesus Christ. We believe that 2,000 years ago, Jesus came, died for our sins, resurrected on the third day, is alive, and is coming soon. Today we relight the first candle of Advent, the candle of hope, and we light the second candle of Advent, which is the candle of love. Jesus demonstrated sacrificial love with his whole life and death on the cross on our behalf. We celebrate God the Father as he loved us by giving us the most precious gift, his one and only son, Jesus Christ. As God has shown us his sacrificial love, let us show sacrificial love also. In the book of Deuteron Deuteronomy, we find these words, for the love for the Lord is not partial and takes no bribe. He executes justice for the orphan and the widow and loves the strangers, providing them food and clothing. You shall also love the stranger, for you were strangers in the land of Egypt. From the Gospel of John, Jesus said, I give you a new commandment, that you love one another just as I have loved you. You also should love one another by this by this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. Um, for today's blessing over our service, please join me in reciting the Lord's Prayer, which I know all of you know. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. Stand and join us. Oh, just You'll stand and join us as we sing joyful, joyful, we adore thee.
morning, everyone. Thank you so much, worship team. <clears throat> All right, hey, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we welcome your spirit this morning to touch those here and online. Um, may some of the words that we just heard uh, penetrate our hearts. Be our guiding light this morning and throughout the week. We pray that there's some things here that hold power in our lives that we can apply this week. And um, as always, Lord, I just pray that you somehow replace me with a portion of you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, we are in Matthew 2. <clears throat> It's kind of a kind of a, a fun little message this morning, and I, I hope it's fun, and I also hope it's actually a little bit penetrating as well. So how often do any of you fast? Now, you don't have to raise your hand. Um, how many of you would feel like you would probably die if you fasted from food? <laughs> I, I know some people here that would probably say that. Uh, how many of you remember last Christmas, maybe the Christmas before, when our church was scrambling with so many other churches trying to figure out how to do Christmas without food? You start to realize that there might be something a little bit more powerful about food in our Christmas traditions, right? And so... The Christmas story, which we'll read a portion of it in just a little bit, if you really read it, and I've mentioned this before, and this is what gripped my heart, is anything but comforting. Uh, put yourself in the shoes of Joseph and Mary, the wise men or the shepherds. Joseph and Mary were running for their lives. Uh, the wise men were manipulated by the king. The shepherds were terrified by angels, right? Sounds really comforting, doesn't it? And uh, so what is it about Christmas that brings us so much comfort, right? And, is, or maybe joy this time of the year. So it's, it's really things since then, there's a portion of that that actually is just our traditions. And they are a blessing. They are really a blessing. That is the focus of this series are the traditions and things God might have brought us since then. Now, we want to be real careful with this because, again, do we want to worship our traditions? Because we can. A commercialism is a, is a great way to look at it in that sense. But like I mentioned last week, commercialism can't, can't take Christ out of Christmas. So we're always going to have Christmas, and I'm excited about that. But last week, we looked at the power of music. How many of you enjoy Christmas music? There's no music in the Christmas story tradition right? That's a blessing. Uh, how many of you realize the power of O Holy Night or the Hallelujah Chorus? Pretty powerful stuff. Next week, we're talking about light. How many of you like Christmas lights? I mean, there are no Christmas lights, really, in the story of Christmas, but you can all think of one, can't you? The star, right? But our, our sanctuary is filled with Christmas lights, and so, I, you know what, there's, there's some traditions that they're not bad. And, and so uh, it's a pretty, pretty traditional, beautiful thing to enjoy this time of the year. So what are we talking about today? It may sound really simple, but I just labeled this message food. <laughs> uh, I asked you at the end of last week's message, what does Bethlehem mean? Uh, let's read another portion of the history of Christ's birth. Math. Matthew 2, and we'll start at uh, just verse 1. Let me, let me get over there. Okay, yeah, so let's go ahead and read. We're going to read verses 1 through 12. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it comes up, and it have come when it rose and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had called together all the people, the chief priests, the teachers of the law, he asked them, where is the Messiah? Uh, where was the Messiah to be born in, in Bethlehem in Judea? So how many times are we hearing the word Bethlehem? 
so for this is what the prophet was written. For you, Bethlehem, in, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. And as we all ought to know by now, ever since uh, the New Testament, God has uh, got a, a very powerful thing called a grafting. Just like you might do with a plant, you can graft in new branches. And that's what we are. And we are his people, Israel, now. He's grafted. He's adopted us. We are, we are his kids. Amen. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from the exact time uh, the star had appeared. And he sent, uh, he sent them to Bethlehem and said, go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me so that I may go and worship him. We all know that was a lie, right? And after they heard the king, they were on their way. And, and, and the star that, that they had seen when it rose ahead of them, and then it stopped over the place where the child was. And when they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw a child with uh, his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented them with gifts of gold, gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream and not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. As a side note, as the Holy Spirit told you something recently, just come right out and told you something. This is what happened. They, they saw something in a dream. They were warned to take a different direction. So the Holy Spirit warned you or told you, you need to go a different direction. That's a freebie. So, good morning, everyone. I love Christmas time. I really want some, like, hot cocoa in here. Peppermint mocha. Thank you, Zoe, for letting me be blessed by walking around with your beautiful young daughter. So, number one. Food is an avenue for comfort. And some of you are going, a little too much so. I'm with you. Ecclesiastes 9.7 says, uh, go, eat your food with gladness, and drink your wine with a joyful heart, for God has already approved what you do. So there's no getting around the fact that food, well, you might have some exceptions, makes you feel good. <laughs> Can you think of something that doesn't? Probably. Some sort of food. So are there any Christmas gatherings without food? Uh, even in the poorest countries where Christmas is celebrated, there's usually a little extra effort made uh, to have some something a little bit more special for the meal at Christmas time. How many of you remember the movie uh, Ebenezer? And and so Ebenezer, he's the Scrooge, but he's got this one worker. Uh, and the one worker, what does he do at home? He's got like, they've got as much as he can, a special, a little extra special meal, Right. A uh, question for you. What food would it be a sin to go without at Christmas time? You probably all have something like, there's got to be this, right? So it could be the ham, beautiful ham. could be the turkey. Uh, you guys can think back to Thanksgiving. Is it the mashed potatoes? Is it the green bean casserole? That seems to be the mainstay. Or maybe it's the candy cane or the eggnog or... The pumpkin spiced latte. I don't know. Gatherings are extremely special in every sense. One of our core challenges we are attacking this year at our church uh, is our connectivity, right? We are working hard on it. Why? It is so important. Our gatherings are so important. What is a part of our gatherings that it's like you got to have it there? Go ahead and say it. We're talking about it. Food. So I had a picture pop up with her family. It was outside. I don't know, even know if it was last year or the year before. It might have been the year before. We were outside on our back porch. It's freezing cold. How many of you remember this? And we did our online Christmas Eve service. 
and we're serving food on our back porch and it must have been about 30 degrees and it was cold and we had a big heater and we had like a portable fire pit we had it all out there and we were still cold but we're trying to be careful for everyone and space people out and all of that gotta have food gotta have food so this might be a simple point it's not if i were to ask you if someone came and gave you how many of you would like a new car you know, so if somebody came and gave you a new car, how thankful would you be? Let me tell you something. You should be just as thankful for a new car as you are for the food on your table. You can't live without food. You can live without a car. First Timothy 6, 6 through 9 says, but godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into the world and we can take nothing out of it. But if we have food and clothing, what are those? Those are your most basic needs. Does God know how to take care of his people? Yes. He knows exactly what you need. He's going to make sure you got what you need. We will be content with that. Those who want to get rich fall into temptation and a trap and into many foolish and harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction. So there's more on that. It talks about the, 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 the love of money is, is the root of a lot of evil out there. right? That's what that passage goes on to talk about. So now ask yourself, are you truly eating your food with gladness? Maybe you will a little bit more. Maybe you will a little bit more. Food is an avenue of comfort. Number two, food is an avenue for creativity. Creativity. How many of you take the time to dress up the table for the big meal at Thanksgiving or Christmas? My wife does. Um, I, I help her. Don't get me wrong. She's, she's, I'm, I'm not just watching her and, and championing her. Good job, hon. No, she puts me to work. So, and, and she can't reach everything I can reach, too. So, Now, let me ask you all of this. How many of you notice how beautiful the food looks, not just how great it tastes? How many of you are like, give me the food, and you got it, you've got half of it pulled down into your gut before you even took a look to see the presentation? How many of you notice the hard work that goes into that? How many of you have watched the, the, the British baking show? All right, it's a great show, fun show. What is as important as the way the food tastes? That's number one. That's, they'll tell you that. That's the first most important thing, how it tastes. What's the second thing? How it looks. Better look good. So how many of you, um, uh, oh, so one of, the, one of the most iconic things that brings us so much comfort in the, is the presentation of the meal. And frankly, the beautiful turkey, the beautiful ham, those sorts of things. So as point number one is maybe about giving God thanks for our food, which we probably need to at points get past just having that be the ritual prayer over our meal. Like, do you mean it, right? Just think about that while, while you're giving thanks. Uh, another way of phrasing maybe point number two is that we have to give thanks or praise to each other for those that make the food actually look really good. Presentation, uh, creativity. I don't think we know how much work goes into that. My wife brought home some cookies from yesterday's ornament exchange, by the way. Thank you, Barb. Uh, ladies, ornament exchange, just saw the pictures. Beautiful time. You blessed people. We want to say thank you for that. Um, but, uh, so my wife brought home some of the cookies, like one of each of the cookies. And I gotta tell you, they looked really good and they also taste very good. Uh, so there's some work. Esther 3535 mentions this, and it's not pertaining to food, but maybe it should. He has filled them with skill to do all kinds of work as engravers, as designers. Do you get that word? embroiderers in blue, purple, scarlet yarn, fine linen, and weavers, all of them skilled workers and designers. You don't have to build the temple here. It's built. We're sitting in it. But there's some people that put some work, really some hard work, into how that food looks. Here's, here's what I think we, we fail to realize. When people are creative with their presentation, 
what they are doing is they are showing an expression of their giftings. Do you know what your gifting is? A lot of Christians out there do not know what their giftings are. And frankly, it's really sad because if you know what your gifting is, you'll pour into it. You'll have a lot of fun with it. But the devil doesn't want you to know your gifting because he likes you to feel worthless. Know what your gifting is. Know what you should be creative in doing. What do I get to be creative in doing? You're watching it right now, right? What's your gifting? What's your calling? Do you know what it is? How are you blessing the Lord through your giftings? You're not going to be able to do that if you don't know what it is. So I'm not creative with really making food look good, but I can grill some really good pork chops, all right? Uh, but I can tell you it feels really good to be appreciated for however our presentation is, whatever our giftings are. You, you, you guys should learn how to like champion each other. I hope you do. I hope you know what each other's giftings are. And frankly, they're a lot more usually than what we see just in front of us. So when my wife makes the baked chicken uh, with carrots and on onions surrounding, or my mother-in-law makes the beautiful ham and it's nicely caramelized with co the, the nice coating and the, the pineapple swirls around it, you guys all got the picture, right? You probably have some of that. Or when we go to Central Oregon and our dear friends make the most beautiful looking dark um, Dutch apple pie, because they know that's one of my favorites. Of course, my mouth waters. But what do I also take in? We take in the presentation, the creativity. So what are we really saying here? Do you know that when one of your parents or grandparents or siblings or maybe even a son or a daughter uh, makes your food look good and not just taste good, what are they doing? They are serving you with their creativity. And we need to bless each other for that. If we think back to Christmas, what were Mary and Joseph doing? They couldn't even find a place to stay, let alone the fact that it says nothing about them even finding anything to eat. And talk about presentation. What was, what was their presentation? They were in a cave or maybe some sort of a shed where animals were kept. So when God gave us the great blessing and one of the most simplest fashions of certain people that make a, a home feel like a home with their creative, beautiful, awesome looking food. Um, this is a part of the comfort of the traditional Christmas season. This series is very different than probably a lot of what you might expect out there because we are focusing on the blessings that God gives clear through time. He keeps giving blessings. Your traditions that are going on are a blessing from him. Christmas music. I didn't hear any of that going on when we talked about it last week. Again, what are we saying in some similar way to the first point? Being thankful not just for food, but that it's, it's an avenue of creativity that we might just be taking a little bit for granted. If you want to apply this point, think about this when you get together with your gatherings and look to see who's taken a little bit of extra effort and maybe give them thanks for that, not just chow down. I, I would have loved to have seen the Trans Siberian Orchestra last week or the, or, or the Nutcracker or some other fancy thing this Christmas. But honestly, those aren't mainstays that bring me comfort this time of the year. Our gatherings that food is a part is pretty cool, right? Ephesians 4.29 says, Let no corrupting talk come out of your mouths, but only such as is good for building up as it fits the occasion. So when you have the occasion of having a really good meal together, that's an occasion. What way could you find to maybe build people up during that occasion? Now, of course, we're being specific about presentation, but what are some other things? A lot of people go to a lot of work. A lot of people put a lot of work in decorating in here this year. So it says, as is good for building up, as fits the occasion. We ought to be actually applying this in all kinds of occasions, shouldn't we? So how many of you probably just wolf your food down without looking at that? So it's an avenue of creativity during Christmas time. It's an avenue of creativity. Give thanks to one another. And yes, you can point this in a hundred other areas. Before I just tell you, number three, let me read a verse for you. Then Jesus declared, I am, in John 6, 35, you have your notes. If you have your notes, look at this. John 6, 35, Jesus declared, I am the what of life? Bread. I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. 
So we give God thanks for our most basic necessity, food, and we give each other praises for their creativity. It's their expression, even of worship. You know, we don't work under man. We work under, as under the Lord, right? God wants to bless you. Give thanks to Jesus for being the bread of life. He wants to bless you. God is in the blessing business. He loves us. You guys know that? I think someone in here needs to know that today. Like more than head knowledge. Like someone in here today needs to know that God loves you. And whatever it is that's in the way of that is the devil's distraction. You need to know that you're loved. You need to know that you have worth. You need to know that you have a purpose that he's got out there for you. You need to, you need to know you're forgiven. Guilt, shame, fear, all that stuff. He'll, he'll kill that stuff with his overwhelming love. How many of you have just, you just, you need to know his overwhelming love this morning? God doesn't like to withhold any good thing from us. There's some real similarities. How many of you in here, parents, there's some real similarities between the Heavenly Father and how we are or how we should be as parents. And one of the things is that if, if our kids want something that's within reason and not totally bad, won't we do everything possible probably to try and get that for them or do that for them? Don't we want them happy? Don't we want to try? We want them happy, don't we? This is a similarity between us and God. He loves to do good stuff for us. Every good thing comes down from the Father of lights. But as we talk about the tradition of food in the literal sense, as we have in the first two points, we have to take a moment and talk about it in the spiritual sense. Spiritual. You aren't going to find God's blessings of God. You're not going to find the blessings of God if you're eating what the devil is dishing out. Do you need me to say that again? You aren't going to find the blessings of God if you're eating what the devil is dishing out. And he's dishing out a lot of stuff. And we're taking it. And I don't mean here. I mean, we know this is cultural. We're taking it. 1 Corinthians 10.23 says, I have the right to do anything, you say. We do. We have the right to do anything. But go on and read the rest. But not everything is beneficial. You can do it, but it may not benefit you. Jesus is the bread of life that we like to eat from the sludge of the pigsty. No matter which way we slice it, it's human nature. I'm not pointing my finger at y'all. I fall back into stuff every single week. And I'm not talking about like some, you know, don't let your mind go off too far. But I got tendencies. I've got a personality. How many of you know what the good parts and the tough parts of your personality are? And you're like, I treated that person again, just like the, the way that I'm trying to get away from. By the way, you can't get rid of your personality. That's why you need Jesus, because he works on those edges, and he'll help you through new, he changes you. But Jesus, bread of life, God's word, God's Holy Spirit, the redemption of Jesus carries every single satisfaction we will ever need, and yet we often run back to the ugly stuff, the ugly bread, the moldy bread. So you ought right now to give God thanks for his grace if you've accepted Jesus because he has forgiven you. He will forgive you. You just need to take that in. The word Bethlehem means house of bread. Jesus calls himself the bread of life. No matter how you want to say, say it, he's making it clear that he's here to satisfy your life in a way that nothing else or no one else can. But isn't it true that we want to test that? Something else is going to make me happy, right? Because we want to feel good. I often have to harken back to my early days prior to ministry when I cried out to God that there had to be more to this life, that I needed him to show himself. I did not want to go just through the motions, and he showed himself to me. 
And by the way, I mention it often, it was terrifying. <laughs> it was what I needed. But why did I need this? Because I didn't want to just survive. I wanted to thrive. I hope you're not in here just surviving today. Jesus is the bread of joy. Jesus is the bread of peace. Jesus is the bread of wisdom. Jesus is the bread of right relationships and righteous relationships. And Jesus is the bread of the family, the way he designed it. He calls himself the groom. He calls us the bride. Jesus is the bread of wholeness and forgiveness. Jesus is the narrow road. We need to hear that. Why do I say that? The world sometimes calls us narrow-minded. Good. We need to be narrow-minded because it is so easy to get off the path. The road has a big old wide road. It's so easy to go down. And it's so easy to fall off. Otherwise, if you don't know the narrow road, you're going to fall back into the muck and the mire. And so we have to fix our eyes on Jesus. So our food is an avenue of comfort. Thank you, God. Food is an avenue of creativity. Thank you, one another. That's if that's your gift. Point number three, food is an avenue for cherishing. Because when Jesus gave thanks and broke the bread and said, this is my body, he wasn't joking. As we read, but you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Bethlehem was no popular city. It was a town that when people were traveling, they would stop in, they'd stay for a night, hopefully grab a meal, and travel on. It was a small city, nothing memorable, and yet, where was Jesus born? The symbolism of the Creator being born not in mighty Jerusalem, but in humble Bethlehem, ought not to be lost in the thought that God isn't looking for the person of great esteem, but those of low esteem and humble settings. If you feel like you are in a low place and you're in a humble setting, you are right where God wants you because he's ready to meet with you. Watch out for that pedestal because God's not going to meet you there. Is what he longs for is to come to you and me. So when your hearts, when your when your heart hurts, let me let me tell you one thing right now. When your heart hurts, God's heart is hurting. Do you need to hear that? Do you need to know that? Parents, when your kids are hurting, regardless of whatever is going on in their life, when your kids are hurting, do you hurt? You hurt with them. Even if it was their fault or whatever it was, you don't want to see them hurt. Your heart hurts when they hurt. God's heart hurts when you are hurting. Without a doubt, this is it is no different between God and us as parents, whether whatever is going on. So if you're, if you're hurting because you don't know him, that's why he sent his son to the cross. If you're hurting because you're lacking some hope today, that's why he sent his son to the cross. If you're hurting because you're stuck in some sin or a tough spot, no matter where you're at, that's why he sent his son to the cross. If you're hurting because you don't know if God will forgive you, that's why he sent his son to the cross. Do you need forgiveness today? Could be for something today or yesterday, even who knows how long ago. Do you feel stuck? And like there's some guilt. There's something that's coming to your mind right now. Here's all you do. You ask God to forgive you. You mean it. Make sure you mean it. You just ask him to forgive you. Do it now. God, will you forgive me? I'm trusting what Jesus did on the cross because he said on the cross that horrible day, Father, forgive them. If Jesus asked God to forgive you and me, then all you need to do is claim that forgiveness. It is done. I really hope you aren't walking around with a burden that could be so heavy from the weight of guilt. That is a horrible way to live. I, I goof up every week. Do I walk around in that guilt? No. My, my Jesus has forgiven me. And he'll, he'll help me do better. Who, who loves Jesus today? 
fact, I do. Why? Because he's the bread of my life. You know, I cherish my kids. And there's others that I, that I cherish that are kind of like sort of a part of our, you know, part of our family. You know some of them. The spiritual bread of Jesus is an avenue to cherish all that Jesus is and what he's done. The spiritual food, the bread of life. Isn't that what Christmas is about? It's about him. He's your life. That's why we celebrate Christmas. Um, would you get your communion cups if you have those ready? And I want to share a little story. Might be a little bit different than sometimes how we normally do it. I have wanted to get reg registered with the Choctaw Indian tribe. I'm one eighth Choctaw. <laughs> I don't know if you guys knew that. And I went to do it, and I couldn't find my birth certificate. Had every other kind of document. Couldn't couldn't do it. They said, "No, nope, we got to have your birth certificate." And I ordered a couple, but they are taking forever to come in the mail. I celebrated my dad's birthday yesterday or the day before. And I told him, it, it, it was to, you know, earlier I was telling him about all of this. And my mom and dad, they go, you know what? I think we have your original birth certificate. And uh, they found it. And, and so I said, you know, dad and I were meeting the other, other day. And I said, can you, can you bring that? And he said, sure. I actually took a look at it. It was very ornate. They made those things really cool looking. I got, I said, you know, got one of my little baby feet about this big. Got the date on it. I was born in Portland. Woodstock Hospital, whatever is over there. I don't remember. I, I was too young. All right. I have a question for you. What day is your birthday? You know, you, you know what your birthday is. Now, I've got another question is, let me ask it again. What day is your real birthday? Jesus replied, very truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. I hope you're born again. Why? Because for you to enjoy spiritual food, you need to be born into a spiritual life. And the problem is that we settle for so much less. And we settle for the scraps falling from the table rather than coming to the table. We settle for what the devil dishes out, and then we wonder why we aren't enjoying the blessings of God. Christmas is a beautiful time of the year, but it, make no mistake, it points to one Savior and one way to get right with God, and one avenue to heaven is through Christ's sacrifice. So as we celebrate the day of his birth on Christmas, we, we do that. But the whole rest of the year, what do we do the first Sunday of every month? We celebrate his death and his resurrection. But actually, Jesus didn't say, remember my resurrection. He said, remember my death. Because that's where it all got taken care of. Are you only surviving? Don't just survive. Enjoy some real food. You have your cups handy. For I receive from the Lord what I pass on to you. Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and he said, This is my body. And he wasn't joking. I hope you're tasting real bread. You need it. Life is tough. Life is tough, right? It's tougher without Jesus. This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's take the symbolic bread. Thank you so much, Lord, for the family of God, for your body that we can all take a part in, and you invite us all. No matter our stature, no matter our profession, no matter what power place we hold, we got nothing when it compares to you, and we all need you. Thank you for what you did for us. Take the bread with me. 
In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread, <laughs> the food, and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. It is finished. You can come right to him. You don't need no preacher, bishop, pastor, pope. You come right to him. He tore the veil. I hope you're taking the bread. He's handing it to you directly now. You don't got to go through a sacrificial beast. You have the sacrificial lamb. Amen? Let's take the juice. Lord, where there is hurt, let them know they're forgiven if they've accepted you and what you did. It's all forgiven. Where there's a hopelessness, give a direction. Where there's a confusion, make the path look straight. Where there's a joy, let them give a praise. We thank you, Lord God, for taking care of our most basic needs. All the rest is just a blessing. Thank you for this group here today. We honor you, we praise you, and we remember you today, what you did on the cross, and we claim it every time we're having that rotten day when our old nature creeps up and does something. You got our hand and we're grabbing on tight. Love you so much, Lord. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, normally before that moment, I'll welcome the worship team to come up. So I'm just going to do that right now and, and uh, welcome them to come on up. And if you want, just you can kind of continue to say a prayer in your own mind or, or wait for them to come on up and we'll listen to a final song today. Thank you, everyone, for coming. It's been good because God is good. All oh. Stand and join us as we close with Hark the Herald Angels Sing.
week. See you next week.